patient's sickness and above a certain level, it is lethal. There's no treatment for it at all. But that's because our cells have been so severely impacted. Next. It does not, however, take that level of radiation exposure to cause damage that you can see. It is, however, subcellular. We can't see radiation, we can't smell it, we can't hear it, we have to have equipment to detect it. And so um, very often people can just sort of get by with saying there's no problem. But in Europe, after Chernobyl, they figured out that you could actually look at the uh, defects to the chromosomes That one is a case of two that have been broken by radiation and have reformed together so they have two centers. And so we can actually see the, the damage of radiation. This is actually used as a dosimeter almost to tell what level of radiation people have had. And this is in what you would call the low end of radiation exposure, nowhere near lethal. Next. Okay. The, one of the biggest issues is that our radiation research is based on Hiroshima and Nagasaki victims, which is a terrible story of vaporizing whole cities and people surviving and other people studying them. We have learned a lot from those people, but that was a single flash. It was an external dose. Chernobyl, Fukushima, other places like this community are impacted by radioactive air, radioactive water, radioactive food. And this slide is so telling because our standards are written assuming it's a man, an adult male, who's getting that dose. Next slide. Uh, radioactivity concentrates in our bodies. I'm not going to go into all these details, but when it is inside our body, that dose gets very high for the tissue in the area where the radioactivity is located because it's immediately right there. And depending on the half-life, the biological half-life, how long we live, some of it may be a committed dose for the rest of our lives. Next slide. You can again see the impact of radiation in the body. This picture is of the lung tissue of an ape, and the black areas are dead cells. The center of the large black area is a plutonium uh, particle. Next. This is um, a slide that indicates that it depends on who's getting the dose as to what happens. At the beginning of the slide are the embryo, fetus, and child. It levels off as we become adults, and it ticks up in the old age. Next slide. Now, you may have noticed that there were two lines, one for men and one for women. It turns out in recently published reports that women overall in the long-term studies are showing 50% more cancer and 50% more death from cancer from the same dose of radiation as adult men. And it's a little bit less clear about children. Children are, as a group are somewhere, some people say twice as vulnerable. That's a recent industry comment in the media. But we have data that shows that uh, developing in the womb is as much as 200 times more vulnerable to radiation impacts than adults. So somewhere between twice and 200 times. We have very little studies that differentiate between boys and girls, but there is some. And it indicates that girl children are the most vulnerable to radiation health impacts. Now, why is this? Is it behavior? Is it what we think? Is it what we do, is it, we're wimps? No. We don't have the answer to this question. But Dr. Rosalie Bertel, one of the icons of the 20th century in terms of stepping forward, being brave, helping others to take the wool away from their own eyes so that we can protect ourselves, right? We have a right to equal protection under the law, but if the law is not protecting us, we need to protect ourselves. And Dr. Rosalie Bertel says it's because we have more reproductive tissue and reproductive tissue is more radiosensitive. And so this slide indicates that compared to the male body, female bodies have more reproductive tissue. Well, this isn't the whole story, but it's certainly a big piece of it. Next. Okay, this is just reminding us that it's at the level of our cells and women and children are more vulnerable. Next. This is the report I mentioned biological effects of ionizing radiation. The numbers are in there, but the report does not say a word about women being more vulnerable. Their numbers say it, but their words do not. Next slide. 
This is my website, Nuclear Information and Resource Service. This is the radiation page. And the top one there that you can't read is the paper that tells you all this called Atomic Radiation is More Harmful to Women. And that little picture over there is what you're looking for. It's a PDF file. And the title of the paper is simply Atomic Radiation is More Harmful to Women. And it's, it's information that everybody needs. Everybody needs to know this. It's not just women need this. Men need us to be healthy, too. The babies need to come from somewhere, right? So we're all in this together. Next slide. All right, I'm about at time, but I want to just zip through the pictures from Fukushima because it is truly a global impact. We are impacted here. And more than that, we need to join hands with the people in Japan and help them to be protected. This is Unit 3 exploding. Next slide. This is what's left of it. It had a fuel pool. Clearly, a large amount of that fuel pool got exploded, which means that there's particles of irradiated fuel traveling around the globe. Next slide. Next slide. Forget that. That's the steam coming out, so it leaves by melting fuel and the gases, hydrogen explosions, other explosions, steam runoff. And now they want to incinerate the rubble. Next slide. So this is people in Japan. Next slide. And we don't want this to be people in Japan, but a friend of mine who's an organic farmer in Japan sent this picture of her tomato in Fukushima. Next slide. This is not radiation. We don't have pictures that are credible of the radio radiological plumes. We need them. The data exists, but it has not been released credibly. But this is NOAA saying what happened with the wave. This is the planet, and this is the distribution of the tsunami's force. So you can just well imagine that the air currents are similar. Next slide. And here's one of the non-credible, but still quite probably accurate um, pictures of the distribution of everything, iodine, cesium, uh, particles of fuel. Next slide. And another one. That's the xenon. Next slide. Uh, OK, this is just taking us back to the beginning. One in a million, that's a super fund. One in 100,000, typical super fund, because the first one's the goal. So 100,000 100, is what they actually achieve. They try. Exempted super fund is 1 in 10,000. 1 in 286 is what our Nuclear Regulatory Commission allows on a daily basis to anyone who is impacted by their licensees, and that's the best case scenario. And it assumes a standard man. If you apply the numbers in the National Academy of Science report, that same standard applied to women is 1 in 200, and those are fatal cancers, whereas the ones above are cancers. Fukushima, they are planning to allow people to stay in areas that will cause 1 in 100 for adults. And five years will be 1 in 5 cancers for adults. We need to join hands with them. Next slide. So the good news is, is when it's 93 million, so 93 million miles away, we can all be pro-nuclear. So when somebody tells me I'm anti-nuclear, I say, no, I'm not. I'm intensely pro-nuclear. I just don't like terrestrial nuclear activities. <laughs> Next slide. And so this is us joining hands. And I just want to say that I'm so pleased to be in Idaho because most of my work is helping places that we hear about on all these different facilities and you know different types of nuclear activities. Have those places have faces? Because as the radioactive waste discussions go forward, it is so important that we be one community, that we not say small world when we meet somebody who's also working on enrichment or stopping and processing, that instead we turn to each other and say, big family. Thank you.